Hey guys, it's Steve here and today I'm with Jane Ahern, she's a nutritionist and what we're going to do today is just introduce Jane a little bit about her journey to becoming a nutritionist and also just uh, talk about some of your specialist areas and people that you like working with as well. Um, so Jane, do you want to kind of take it away and just give me a bit of background um, more so on your journey to start off with and to becoming a nutritionist? Okay. Um, well, I started working in the sort of health and fitness industry about 2011, um, always into sports, exercise, healthy eating throughout my life, um, but that's where my journey sort of started, kind of career-wise. Um, I became a fitness instructor during that time, and what led into the more nutritional side of it was around 2013, I had my daughter, and afterwards suddenly realised that I was constantly ill. Um, repeat infections, fatigue, not feeling well, and as soon as it starts to feel better, you'd almost be hit with something else. Um, multiple doctor's appointments, antibiotics, um, ultrasounds to see you know, what was going on, and eventually was told, there's nothing wrong with you, you're fine. Yeah. And I knew that that wasn't the case. Um, <clears throat> so I decided, right, if I'm gonna fix myself, I'm gonna have to try and maybe do it myself. Um, did a little bit of background research, a lot of reading about just nutrition, the microbiome, um, and even just sort of how the human body works and how it should be functioning. And um, managed to kind of find ways to treat myself. Um, and since I took, took about six months or so to eventually become well again, um, and since then haven't suffered the same uh, infections and conditions that I did back then and I suddenly realised, wow, this is something that people should know about. Um, and when I started talking about it even with friends, uh, particularly even in sort of mum's groups, uh, a lot of people were saying that it's almost like you're telling my story. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought, right, this is something that people need to know more about. Um, so then I thought, right, I'm going to pursue this maybe as a career. I went back to study got my MSc and focused on sports and exercise nutrition just because I love sports, exercise, I'm more familiar with that. Um, and yeah, as I say, nutritional aspects to help that, but also now when I'm working, that's what I kind of tend to deal with sports, but also the sort of functional medicine side. Yeah, so you have this kind of like blended holistic sort of approach, I guess, more yeah. so with sports nutrition, um, but then you also work with clients just like with standard kind of nutrition functional medicine type clients Absolutely. as well at the same time yeah so i think um i do try and take a, a holistic approach with athletes as well there's a lot to be said for supplements out there but then there are other ways of of doing it um as well um and definitely with members of the general public people that haven't been feeling well and again don't understand why they're in a situation whether it's weight gain whether it's you know, not achieving what they want to achieve um, physically. Um, that's what I, I try to kind of focus on. Yeah. So tell me then, who are the kind of like, who would you say are the main clients that you work with? Like their typical backgrounds, what they, you know, what their goals are, that yeah. type of thing. Um, at the moment, it's funny, uh, so many of my clients come in, there's almost an epidemic of stress mm -hmm. at the moment. Um, and what I'm finding the more I'm, I'm working and through experiences that I had myself is the sort of psychological aspect and how that physically affects the body and how bringing back um, that real connection that the, the brain and the body, particularly the microbiome and the gut should have um, is really key to anyone achieving any goal um, because there's so many people out there that are just sort of lost, they don't understand why they're not sleeping, they're not um, being able to wake up in the morning and, and really go for it, they're not feeling joy. Um, so that has been, I've worked a lot with people with that. Because um, if you worked within a psychotherapy centre as well? I did, yes, yes. Yeah. So I was working as a nutritionist um, yeah, in a psychotherapy centre um, and a lot of people that were referred to me, um, many of them had eating disorders. Mm -hmm. um, again due to you know all psychological but um yeah a lot of people uh would just be coming in and uh saying that they've gained weight and even though they were following certain diets trendy diets things like that it wasn't working 
they were almost gaining more weight or feeling awful and not being able to function, sort of kind of bringing that down to more kind of a say natural, holistic approach and yeah. focusing on other things, not just uh, crazy diets. Yeah, yeah. Um, also work with some athletes at the moment, which I love doing. It's always interesting. Um, and uh, yeah, some athletes who are ill as well and trying to kind of recover from sickness and that and reoccurring infections um some endurance athletes you know constantly getting up for respiratory tract infections and way to kind of manage that so that they can recover properly and get back into training yeah um and yeah yeah so again so it's using that holistic model again i guess with even with athletes you're going to have those psychological stresses that are going on that are potentially having that physiological impact as well at the same time so yeah. you can't overlook the effect of stress and you know it's anything like that on performance as well at the same absolutely. time. Absolutely. I mean, that's one of the one of the awful things that you see constantly in athletes is um, you know they push their bodies to the limits, um, and even if they are getting suturing, you know all the nutrients they need for performance wise, um, there's never really going to be times when you get sick, and that's you know something that you just have to accept sometimes and properly recover from. Athletes aren't great at doing that. I've mm -hmm. noticed. They like to get back into training, and as I say, the adrenaline and the stress of, wait, my competition is now, or, you know, I, if I'm not working out or, you know, running a certain amount of miles, I'm not going to be prepared. And so they go back into it without fully recovering, mm -hmm. and then they injure themselves. And, and it's, it's just, that it's cycle just again, again, that cycle again. So it's, it's really focusing the mind on looking after yourself. You'll perform brilliantly. You don't, yeah. you won't, and that's in almost every area. Yeah. So key clients that you're definitely, uh, you work a lot with and, and enjoy working with the athletic population. So that could be an athlete or it could just be someone that really enjoys training and does a lot of training, yeah. the weekend warrior sort exactly, of types, yeah, that, that, that sort yeah. of thing, which are oftentimes actually, I think, probably more challenging to work with because they've got full-time jobs, maybe their parents as well, plus then they're putting in X amount of hours of training per week. Yeah. So the recovery is, is a lot smaller potentially a lot smaller than say an athlete that is able to go home have a sleep make some food and then go back in and do their second training session later on in the day definitely so you've got the athletic populations mm -hmm. and the kind of you know weekend warriors that sort of thing gut immune people with those types of issues recurrent illnesses um digestive issues going yeah. on um body composition i'm assuming like that's that's an area of which you'll see a lot of people i guess and do, something yeah. you're very comfortable with and given that um backgrounds uh in sort of psychology and working with those types of people and understanding that i'm guessing that's probably one of the main areas of body composition and weight loss with a lot of people would you say yeah i think um you know there's there's with body composition, people are, you know, use this term, not as much now, but you sometimes hear that, I just want to turn my fat into muscle, and you kind of think, well, that's impossible, yeah. but <laughs> yeah, you can lose fat and gain muscle, and, and there's ways to, to do that, but I think there is some misinformation out there, people go online, they think, oh, we'll just cut out all my carbs and have all the proteins, like, let's, you know, focus on really what you want to do and I think making sort of an individualized plan is there's no sort of one size fits all everyone's different as you said there's weekend warriors there's professional athletes there's people with jobs with kids you know with um you know social life could be a part of their work and that and as you say sometimes you're taking a small amount of recovery sometimes the recovery time is just not there at all for people so yeah. um yeah I think it's always sort of taking everything into consideration and, and doing that. Yeah, definitely. And I, and I think that can sometimes be a challenge even when you're looking at um, research, is mm -hmm. that research looks potentially at athletic populations. Yeah. So it's like a group of, you know, 20 athletes, 30 athletes, and we'll give them this or we'll do this one intervention and we'll test against this one outcome and we'll see what happens. And the yeah. reality is, is actually everyone has so many different variables that yeah. those variables need to be taken into account. So sometimes you can have research papers that show no real change in something, but mm -hmm. actually maybe they're just not the right people to do that intervention with. And likewise, the opposite way, you can do an intervention that works that might not actually work with a bunch of other people instead. Exactly, yeah. So I think it's, you know, research is great because it can work as a guidance for us, yeah. but then you have to put a certain level of humanity into working with someone 
in the, okay, what's actually your individual needs and how yeah. can I help you? How can I help guide you with that and then support you with that? And then I think most importantly you agree with this is how do I guide behavior change to allow that to happen as well, which that can often be. With athletes, actually, it's a little bit easier because they're just like, tell me what to do, I'll yeah. go away and do it. <laughs> exactly, and then yeah. the kind of sometimes the non-athletic populations are not quite so black and white with their things. So yeah, and, and like you said, they might have families and kids and all of this other yeah. kind of jazz that's going on that they have to... It seems know. impossible to sort of make huge changes. Whereas yeah, exactly. you say athletes, they just, they've got their eye on the prize and yeah. that's it and they'll do whatever it takes to get there. And as I say, it does make our jobs easier um but you know the, the say it's it is so important as you say individual to each their own because it's and like you said about research when i was doing my research in endurance uh, runners um you know love doing it but again when we had the data at the end and we not just we didn't just do carbohydrate consumption we also did sort of how the gut would respond to certain amounts and they all had, you know, say different times, different outcomes. And in the end, it sort of was like, well, we realized that there was no real difference because when you just put the numbers in, this is what comes out. However, getting to know the guys that came in and how they each responded to it, it made me also see, ah, okay, this research does say something. However, if you look at the individuals and their, what happened with them, the conversations we had, it's all they're all completely different yeah, yeah. And, and interesting when you say that sometimes a research paper that shows no result can in itself be of interest yeah because actually there are results of different levels with different people yeah. that then sh don't show a kind of statistical um improvement but actually there are some people that might have had a statistical difference that there wasn't improved so what was going on with that person exactly, but what might yeah. not have been going on with that person so you obviously just work with averages when you're pulling out the data. Yeah. Anyway, we go off on a tangent. <laughs> um, so I hope that's kind of a nice introduction to Jane. Jane is a nutritionist, the type of clients that she works with. Uh, myself and Jane are gonna be doing a few more videos uh, in the future, so be sure to look out for those. If you're interested in working uh, with Jane, um, then you can also just fill out the contact form uh, on the website as well, um, and we can put you in touch.